What's up, guys? Hong Nguyen here, OG Fitness. Uh, hey, in today's video, how not to get, how, actually, how to judo without getting <laughs> effed up at 40. So this stems from a question that one of the boys in the community asked me. And I'm going to read you guys the question because it's a really, really great, great question. You know, it's not just how do I uh, avoid injury uh, in my 40s doing judo. It's a little bit more than that. He asked for a little bit more details. So here we go. Hey, Hong, awesome videos. Uh, keep up the good work. On the theme of judo for adults, I'd like to see a video about options for people in their 40s who would like to take up recreational judo, but whose first priority is avoiding injury at all costs. I mean, people who don't care about competition or even belts. Um, I think belts are important, you know? but I'll make a video, a separate video about that. Okay, but just want to learn some pros. I've heard there are low impact classes for adults which focus on Uchikomi, uses crash mats, are randori optional, and spend more time on Newaza than the average dojo. Me personally, guys, by the way, I, I've never heard of any, but uh, we'll get to that in a second. <clears throat> Alternately, alternate yeah is it possible to do private judo lessons apparently this is much less common than in bjj i'm personally less interested in learning bjj than judo so unfortunately bjj would not be the solution for me um finally can you do a video giving us your take on krav maga and talking about how much judo there is in km thanks so much peace yeah i always say that peace Awesome question, buddy. All right. <clears throat> now, I prepared my answer for you guys. And there's a lot to unpack here. So we're going to start with, well, obviously, you know, I answered the questions in my notes um, in order. So every question that uh, our buddy here asked, I answered uh, one by one in order. But before that, let me put a little bit of background scenery so you guys could enjoy while I'm um, yapping away. This is just a judo class, uh, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago maybe. Um, so I had it in my in my files. So there you go. Let me play this. Okay. So, all right, guys. Taking up judo for recreation. First off, yes. I believe that everyone should take up judo for recreation. It's an amazing sport and it's very doable that, um, no, I, I wouldn't want to say that. What I'm saying is it's it has a lot of benefits, okay? Even if you're doing it only recreationally, you don't have to compete. It's not important. Now, in regards to the belts, like I said, I'll make a, um, a separate video in regards to that. But yes, I think judo is for everyone. Now, about avoiding injury, it's the way you approach it, right? You have to approach it the right way. And most people, unfortunately, don't approach judo the right way. And that's why they, well, they get injured. Because a lot of times, judo, it's, honestly, it's more the way they structure the classes. For the most part, it's more, it's more set up for kids. And yeah, that's why it's not very adult friendly. Okay, so there are things that you could do, and I separate this into two categories. Things that you could do personally on your own, okay, to not get messed up, not injure yourself. And then things that you could do externally to not mess yourself up. So what you do externally, this is going to involve a lot of communicating with, you know, your coaches, your partners, and of course, vetting the clubs that you go to. Okay, so let's start with, let's see now, the stuff that you could do personally. Okay, master break falling. You have to master break falling. No randori until you master break falling. And I made a video about this. You don't have to spend uh, a year mastering to, to master break falling or months even, you know. Like there's a saying where if you do 20 hours of anything, you're going to be pretty damn good at it. And I would argue that for break falling, you probably don't need 20 hours, man, but you got to do a little bit every time you're there and you want to focus on that. You got to get really comfortable at break falling and you got to test this. And how do you test uh, break falling? Well, 
you have to be thrown by somebody who can obviously throw you in a way where he, he's going to hold uh, that, 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 that shoulder, that one shoulder, so that only one shoulder touches the ground and the other one is holding it so that it softens the impact. But you want to get thrown. Okay, and you want to have this done by somebody who has experience and who knows how to throw you uh, fast, but then soften the landing. So it's important that you you master this because, you know, like just practicing the movement of break falling. That's one thing. But getting thrown, it's another thing. So it, it feels it feels quite different. But you still have to understand the mechanics of break falling. And then after that, be be thrown. And then from there, get comfortable uh, landing properly so that you know you don't um, you don't get hurt. Now, what else do I have for you guys here? Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. Yes. So no, honestly, man, this is something I see all the time. Beginners come in, teach them break falling. You know, they don't, they haven't even mastered it. They 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 suck, and it's okay. But then right away they want to do randori. They want to do the fun stuff. Big mistake, in my opinion. Big mistake. If I had control of the class, dude, until you learn how to break fall, you're not you're not doing any randori, man. And if you are, it's gonna be with uh, somebody that could could handle you properly. You're not just gonna go with anyone. Like I'll I'll pick who you you fight because I don't want you to get busted up, right? As an adult, as older guys, people in their in their, in their forties, man, dude, we have we have we have stuff to take care of. You know, we have families, we have. Uh, work we have you know we just don't want to get hurt man and i'm telling you like doing randori too soon with uh with other beginners and and that's something i'm going to touch on uh in not too long but yeah you're you're just you're just gonna mess yourself up so no randori until you actually learn how to break fall okay now what's your thing do, 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 do. oh and it's an ego thing too i know it's fun randori and, and some guys they go because they want to have fun and you know they're excited and all that and there are other guys it's just ego it's like Poof. no man you know i'm a man i'm not gonna go go fight yeah you go do that until you land funny and you break your shoulder your arm and some guy just snaps your your um your knee <laughs> And then you're going to come here and, oh, no, I should have listened to you. Yeah, yeah, you should have, fool. All right. Uh, I would also, um, I would supervise randories. I think I just mentioned that as well. But I would definitely have randories that would be supervised. It's not something that's done in judo, but I think that it would be important, right? Okay, so I don't want to talk about too too much. Also, you want to focus on your flexibility and mobility. So guys, if you're not flexible and you don't have good mobility in your joints, you got to fix that. That's going to help you um, help stuff to not snap when it's, um, you know, when it's being challenged. We're talking about your joints and all that. And of course, yeah, you don't want to pull your muscles. So it's going to be really important that you guys work on your flexibility and mobility, okay, to avoid injuries. Um, the other thing, have big muscles yes yes big muscles armor you know and cushions the impact big muscles and so you could stabilize too when you're doing your techniques and all because a lot of times you're on one leg you're off balance you know so having muscles it helps man in in anything you do okay so you want to build up big muscles i'm not saying you have to go off and become a bodybuilder because obviously that would take uh, a lot of time out of your day and it's not the goal but you you don't you don't need to to get big muscles, you really just honestly need two hard sessions a week. That's it. And two hard sessions of what, 30 minutes, an hour tops? Like an hour is a long freaking time, man. So I would say even like 30 minutes, 45 minutes with rest, that's it. I usually work out like 40 minutes, 30, 40 minutes, man, hard session, two times a week. That's it. You know, that's all you need. And after that, just just get enough sleep, man. And yeah, if you're, and you got to get protein. And as long as you're not, uh, a vegan, you don't even have to count your protein. You're getting enough protein in pretty much anything you eat. Trust me, guys. Now, oh, yeah. And so th the next thing is don't have too much unnecessary weight. So what I mean by that is that you want to be a healthy weight, okay, for your size. This is really for your joints because if you're overweight, you're heavy, everything is just going to be harder on your joints when you land. Okay, so 
for those of you guys who don't have your um, your weight in check, you know your body composition in check. You gotta you gotta take you it it would benefit you greatly if you lost some of that weight, man. You know, honestly, I I fell on a channel recently, and it's called Dad Bod Judo. So I I didn't really watch a lot of the content. I just skimmed through it a little bit, and um, the gentleman is showing technique and all that. And the dad bod thing, though, nah, I don't I don't agree with that, man. Dad bod, dad bod's gonna it, it just it it just shows like lack of discipline. And as a martial artist, as a judo, like, no, nah, man, no, nah. don't be a, don't be a fat judoka. It's okay I, if you are, I'm not judging, but, you know, I, I see a lot of fat judokas and they're not even doing judo. They're just standing there with their black belts. And then they'll, they'll, they'll go see some, some guys and show them, Hey, you should do it like this, like that. But the credibility aspect of it, man, unless like you're, you've, You've achieved some, you know, you ha you're really good at teaching and you've achieved a lot in judo. But even then, I mean, what kind of example are you when you're, when you're that out of shape, right? Mm. Now, the next thing that you could do as well is that you could focus more on Waza until you're ready to do Tachi Waza Randori. And that helps to, you know, build up your body, your strength, your confidence, have fun at the same time. You could do that. Also, one last thing that you could do personally is that you could make sure you're properly warmed up, okay, before each session. Now, I always find it funny that in judo, we warm up, and then after that, we're nice and warm. We should be doing stuff that, I don't know, requires, um, well, that 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 requires us to be, that that's really important for us to be warmed up, like you know, some, some hardcore drilling, but a lot of times like we warm up and then next thing you know, we have to do technique like, and anyways, that's just me going off a little bit on a tangent. All right. Stuff that you guys could do externally. So this, like I said, has to do with a lot with communication. So you want to talk to your coaches and tell them, tell them your goals. Okay. If you walk into a club, you got to talk to, talk to the coach and tell them, Hey, you know, I want to practice judo. I want to do learn a couple of throws. I want to do this for fun. I don't I don't care about competition. I care my first priority is not to get hurt. And I want to I want to learn. I want to you know have fun, learn my throws and all that because you know judo is awesome. And uh, yeah, so you have to explain that to them. <clears throat> and you want also to uh, you ask them about, you know, hey, crash mats, uh, you know, can I uh, not do the randories and so on and see what they tell you because the important thing is you have to talk to the coach because if you don't tell the coach, he doesn't know. He's just going to go about his business and, you know, uh, do what he does. Right. But if you tell him and then most likely he'll accommodate you in some way, in some way, shape or form. Like in at our club, man, there's those who want to fight at the end and those who don't want to fight. So those who don't want to fight, go do technique, go do crash mat, go do whatever it is that you want. Right. Just, you know, take a little space uh, to the side and do your thing. And that's fine. OK, so there's a lot of guys um, that, that do that. You know, maybe you're injured. Maybe, you know, you're just tired that day. Maybe you just want to work on on something very specific. OK, so you got to talk to your coach. And if he's aware of that, like he'll he'll accommodate you. Of course, he wants you there. It's always it's good to have people at the club. And, and judo, it's not just for kids trying to go to the Olympics and all that. Like it's it's. It's great for adults as well. Okay. And let's see now. Da, 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 da. Here's the thing. I've never heard of low impact classes, but I think that you make it low impact by asking for it, by communicating what your goals are, what your needs are, what you're here for. And you you create that for yourself. You know, if if it's not already in place, you could create that. You don't need to wait around and and, oh, I wish I, there was a school that was, no, you talk to the coach. And like I said, of course, if the coach says no, then, hey, it is what it is. You know, just look for another club. But most clubs, I mean, most most judo guys are really cool, man. Like the coaches and all that, like they'll, they'll you know, they'll they'll want you there and, and they want you to do judo. And it's not just about competition, right? 
So, <laughs> oh, and you're gonna have to communicate with your uh, your teammates as well. Okay, so the next one, don't do red doors with beginners. Uh, beginners, uh, this is funny because if you're a beginner yourself, then you think, oh yeah, I should go with beginners. No, don't go with beginners. Beginners suck. And that means you suck as well. So you are going to hurt them and they're going to hurt you. That's, that's usually what happens with beginner, beginner on beginner, uh, randori sessions. So what you want to do instead is stick with high level guys and gals. I also ask them to take it easy on you. And what that looks like as well on your end is that you have to take it easy as well. And you have to ask them, are you going light enough? Because you don't know how to gauge it yet. When you start off, you're, you think you're going light, but you're, ah, you're, you're contracting your muscles really hard. You're, you're, you're using um, your posting hard with your arms, you know, and gripping like a maniac. So obviously if you do that, yeah, right? Now, also, size matters here, guys. So that means that if you pick a, a more advanced person, but they're a lot lighter than you, and then you go hard, they're going to have to accelerate. And if they accelerate, they're going to throw you on your head, right? So you, you have to like be cognizant of that. If, if the person is an advanced uh, black belt, because not all black belts are necessarily uh, skilled enough to handle uh, spazzy beginners, then what you want to do is that you want to take it easy, man. Like if the, if the person is smaller than you, then, Hey, don't put too much strength in it. Right. Don't get too excited. They won't hurt you. Don't worry about it. So size matters there. Now, obviously if you get a big, uh, a guy, your size or bigger, and he's a black belt, an experienced black belt. Yeah. You, there's not much you could do with him. And you, t if you, you know, like he'll, he'll, he'll work with you. So judo guys are really cool like that. Now, what else? Uh, da, 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 mm. Oh, yeah. With beginners, though, you could do Nawaza. That's fine. It's not the end of the world. Of course, you might might get a couple of bumps and bruises, but there's you're on the ground, so there's no major damage. So I think that would be the only um, thing I would I would let you do Randori with beginners. Okay? Um, Nawaza, but even there, you got you to gotta, you gotta watch it a bit. Like if you see, you talk to your partner and tell them, Let's go light. And here's the thing with talking with your partners. I know it's it's not the cool thing to do, right? But it's actually the smart and the wise thing to do. Communication, man. And of course, if the person is too um, still continues to go strong, then you say, hey, but let's just stop this. Just walk away. You know, you're not here for that, right? There's a lot of people at the club that you're you know uh, that are going to be amazing to train with. You know, so if that one or two or three person, you know, they're they're just not. Um, Align with what you're trying to do. Next, next, the next, their asses. Okay. Now, what you could do if there's no uh, advanced beginners that you could go with, or they're taken, and then you have to go with a beginner, the spazzy beginner. What do you do? Well, you could limit the type of attacks that you could do in a randori. So what that looks like is, for example, you could be like, okay, let's um, let's take it easy because I don't want to get hurt. That's very important to me. Uh, we'll go light. Okay, so we'll play. Uh, what I'd like to do is maybe just grip, you know, like we could just do grip fighting. And then, or we could grip right away. We both get our grips 50-50. And then we just work on, for example, sweeps. Okay, we're just trying to sweep each other. That's it. I want to go light, right? Or we could just do, for example, okay, the only thing we're trying to attack is um, Osoto, right? But we don't even really finish it. Like if we're off balance, it's enough. We don't try to kick the person's leg out of, uh, out under them kind of thing. So you see, you could play with it like that if you have no other choice. Because the thing is, when you have two beginners who don't know what they're doing, who don't know their own strengths, who can't gauge themselves, who have no sense of timing, uh, who don't know how to throw a, a clean technique, not to not like hurt the other person. It's gonna, it's gonna be bad. And even sometimes not even beginners, man, you know, even guys who are orange belt, green belt, blue belt, they, you know, <laughs> they, they'll still hurt you. Right. Okay. Now, another thing as well is that only do one, 
like when you get to the point where you're actually doing Tachiwaza Randori, so standing up Randori with Frozen, all that, only one hard session a week, tops. And it doesn't have to be hard as in like competition style because you don't want to get hurt. It could be challenging, one that's challenging, right? Where you're actually trying to throw the person and the other person is going is actually trying to throw you too. Once again, though, I suggest doing this with, you know, higher level guys that won't hurt you. Another thing you can do, of course, focus on uh, Nagi Komi. So that's just throwing using the crash mat. Um, yeah, for, you know, a lot of throwing because repetitive falling on the mats, it's going to take a toll on you, even though most clubs, not all clubs, but most clubs, they're supposed to have a, oh, man, I forget the word, but there, there's cushioning. There's, it's like a false floor, right? Uh, I know it in French, but in English. Like it's elevated and there's like, um, it could either have tires underneath or hockey pucks, you know, so there's layers to it underneath so that it softens. It's not just the tatamis on concrete, right? So yeah, all that to say that crash mats, but then you, you also have to take away crash mats at one point and learn how to fall on, you know, the mats, right? But anyways, yeah, crash mats are, are, are a good idea. And Uchikomis, you can focus a lot on Uchikomis. So what that looks like are the, the entries, right? So you focus a lot on that, perfect that technique. Ashiwaza Randori, that's another thing that you can do. So you focus a lot on just uh, Ashiwaza techniques. I'm going to make a video on that because Ashiwazas are actually pretty, there's a lot of techniques in, in Ashiwaza. I think for the exam, I had to know like 14 of them or something like that. It was the most out of all the categories. Uh, but I feel as though those ones are really um, good good return for your uh, investment, okay? And they're low risk as well. Like if you if you miss, it's no big deal. And let's see now. Da, 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 da. Oh yeah. And the other thing is, you know, start with. Never mind. Grip, don't don't focus too much on grip fighting at the beginning. You want to learn how to throw, and so just just grip right away. Get your grips. Let the person you know. Grab your grips. Let the other person have your grips as well. You could talk to them and say, hey, I just want to do judo. Let's uh, let's forget the grip fighting. And then you go right into 50-50 so you can work your judo. Okay? And the other thing that uh, our, our buddy mentioned, privates. Yes. You know, I know it's not as, as common in, in judo for privates. But all you really need to do is ask. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's not as... Uh, you know, as common as in BJJ is because in judo, it's like people are very giving with their knowledge. Like the black belts, you're going to see it's, they just like to share and all that. But, you know, privates are, are really good and you should ask your coach. I'm sure he'll be happy to give you privates. Okay. Cause it's money. I mean, who doesn't want to make money doing something that they really enjoy. Right. And it's a good idea, man. You know, if you could afford it, you know, and you want to, accelerate a little bit uh, the learning curve and you know have your coach really show you how to do things so that you don't get hurt and you know you got to voice this obviously uh, you tell them hey i'm really worried about getting hurt and all that is there any way we could do this you know because you know i'm older and i, I don't i can't afford getting hurt and you want to do privates it's good man it's really good and along with all the tips i just explained here i think you'll be you'll be a-okay now in in BJJ, the only ones who, who are very open and willing to help you are other beginners. <laughs> you know, so so that's that it's, it's a funny thing. That in my experience, I find that in BJJ, guys are like, uh, it's like the black belts, they, they kind of like don't talk to you. But in judo, it's man, everyone talks to everyone, man. It's no big deal. You know, everyone is super, you know, down to earth and humble and all that. And yeah, so it's um I think maybe that's why, maybe. And a lot of the, in judo as well, a lot of the coaches, I mean, they do this part-time. They don't They do not do this full-time. You know, I, so they don't, it's not as a, um, they don't really need to, it's not as important to them to, to, to do, uh, to offer privates and to market it so that they could they can make uh, they can make more money 
Whereas in BJJ, it's private, right? So it's, it's different. And yeah, there's nothing wrong with that though. Like my club, it's actually a private club, you know. So it's not funded by the um, uh, the the province, the the government. And yeah, so we do. Yeah, yeah. Nick gives quite a bit of privates in judo, I believe. Anyways, guys, that's it for the video. I hope that helps. Let me just put this back to where it was. So let me know what you think, guys. What would you add to that? Um, you know, how to do judo. Do I teach black? No. Anyways, yeah, because I'm drinking this thing here, and it's the Halloween edition, and the liquid is black. It's usually orange. It's a uh, Fanta. I don't know if you guys noticed. So anyways, what do you guys think? Do you – is there anything else that we could add to this whole thing? Um, judoing, you know – at 40 and beyond so you don't mess up your joints anyways let me know and uh, i'll see you guys in the next one peace